Hello, I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, host of Higher Education Today, a production of the University of the District of Columbia. Welcome back to the education program that connects you to contemporary issues, people, and institutions involved in the world of higher education. Today we'll be talking about political philosophy and the liberal arts. Governor Bob Wise is president of the Alliance for Excellent Education, which works to ensure that students graduate from high school prepared for college. Governor Wise is a former member of Congress who served on the House Education and Labor Committee before becoming governor of West Virginia. Professor Nasser Benegar teaches political philosophy at Boston College. He is the author of Leo Strauss, Max Weber, and the Scientific Study of Politics, and is currently working on a book about the liberalism of John Locke. Professor Benegar received his PhD from the University of Chicago's Committee on Social Thought. Welcome to both of you. Good to be here. Good to be here. Well, well thanks again. Governor, if I could start with you, um, if you wouldn't mind talking about what got you involved in education issues initially when you were in the House of Representatives. I think that may be an interesting way to start. Actually, it started when I was 16 years old and I was having a conversation with a high school classmate in West Virginia and he pointed something out to me. He said, education is the only passport from poverty. And it was true in the 1960s and it's equally true today. And so that meant then, and that becomes even more true today because we have 60% of all of our jobs today require at least some post-secondary, that is education after high school. We don't have a choice and so that's what but improving access to higher education was a critical, uh, critical element of, of and something that I worked on a great deal when I was in public life and continue on today. And when you were a congressman, if I'm not mistaken, you had a reputation for being very involved in financial aid matters. Because in, in my state, uh, financial aid is critically important, and it, it is across the country. But if we were going to get more, many more students in the, some kind of post-secondary, we had to improve financial aid, whether it was the Pell Grant at the federal level or the, there's a number of state financial aid programs as well. But the, the, in a, in that issue has only, I think, increased today as we have to provide the access for more and more of our students to be able to go to college, recognizing it's not just for them, that's the, the main reason, but it's also for all of us because we need them to have post-secondary in order for our economy to do well. And, and if we can bring Nasser into this um, in terms of the, the need for some of the stuff that the governor is talking about, I'm really interested in issues of what it is that students are actually doing when they're actually in, in college. And you, you've made a career out of studying political philosophy and writing about it. Maybe if you could say a word or two about the importance of political philosophy and the importance of the liberal arts once students get from West Virginia or somewhere else to university. Sure, and it, it's, uh, of, of, of course, uh, st students who study liberal arts, uh, they, they can play a very active role in the economy. I've heard uh, many examples of, of, of people who, who went to jobs that ostensibly have nothing to do uh, with what they studied, but because of the, uh, what they learned in school in terms of uh, writing, thinking, uh, they, they were very useful, uh, that was very useful for them uh, in, in the jobs. But, uh, but more importantly, it seems to me that liberal arts is, is essential for our citizenry. That is, that is we, we, uh, we live in a democracy, and, as, and in a democracy, the success of the government depends on the, on the quality of the people. And, and we need to have uh, a wise and a morally responsible uh, public, and liberal arts serves, serves, serves that purpose. If I could also bring a practical aspect as, as well as, as the philosophical, which is so critical, is that we need the liberal arts for another reason, that increasingly the jobs that are created today will, and, and require that students be, one, college and career ready, but that's also defined as having deeper learning skills. It's a deep content knowledge, but it's also combined with the ability to communicate, to work together as a team, to be self-learners, and the liberal arts promote that. But how would that be different, maybe if I could throw this to both of you, uh, from let's say nursing. Like let's say I wanted to become a nurse, mm -hmm. um, that's a very specific skill set. That's right, but, but there are many jobs, uh, I think one cannot make an argument that we should get rid of schools of nursing. We really need those, those schools, but, but there are many jobs that require broader and more flexible uh, set of skills. And, uh, and, and it's, it's very hard to predict in advance what, what that particular job would require. So, so it's, I, I would argue it's much better for the, for the students to become uh, more thoughtful, more attentive, better writers and thinkers. And, uh, and, 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 and I have seen this uh, in, in recruiters who, who pay attention to these things. 
Yeah, and I'm very hopeful that that nurse is skilled in communications, yeah. extrapolation, synthesizing thoughts, taking three facts and, and drawing a conclusion from it, and then being able to communicate that to the other team of healthcare providers, and there, there are going to be a, a wide range of them. So the liberal arts, I think, are, are critical to that. And also, let's remember something. We don't know how long that nurse is going to be a nurse, uh, because you're very likely to have 10 different jobs by the time you're 40 years old, uh, and, and that number only increases. So the constant ability to move and to be, uh, to be able to interact in a, an increasingly complex world, which is something I think the liberal arts bring. But if that's true, why shouldn't we then encourage students in high school to study the liberal arts? Who said we should? Yeah. You think we should? I think we should, and, and indeed there is a lot of concern that we narrow, have narrowed the curriculum so that we're focusing on a test-based uh, uh, education system in K kindergarten through grade 12, and that we focus because of the federal law on English language arts and math. And yet, uh, what 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 we have about a third, 30, 25 to 30 percent of our kids will drop out of high school, and one reason they give is that they're not engaged. Another half of our kids are going to graduate from high school, but without the skills they need for college and career. Once again, so how do we engage them? So what we're seeing now in the last, I think, decade is the importance of the liberal arts as a means of engagement. That doesn't rule out the importance of STEM, science, technology, education, and math. Indeed, what the liberal arts can do is they can help give students another reason to be engaged and to be, be involved in these areas. Yeah, and, and I would add that the one thing that high school students need and that we, have, we need to encourage is that they need to develop a love for learning. And, and, and if they don't have that, they're not going to succeed in college. And, 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 and so if, if one begins in, in a high school level uh, with, uh, with books, uh, whether it's historical or literary, that encourage that love, love of learning, they're going to fare much better in the college level. And let's assume a student does have that love of learning, mm -hmm. and they go into political philosophy at Boston mm -hmm. College or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. How does that interplay with, let's say, the natural sciences? Uh, let's go beyond nursing. Let's mm -hmm. say I'm interested in chemistry. I'm interested in biology. How does political philosophy impact that? Well, it, it doesn't have a direct impact in the sense that it, someone who studies political philosophy will, will not change his un, her, her understanding of biology or chemistry. But it has an uh, impact in this sense that it makes you be more thoughtful of, of your place as a scientist. You know, that is, how do you understand your position in society as a scientist? And reading uh, about Socrates' life, for instance, has, a, has an impact on this. Is it, is it, is it primarily, uh, are you primarily studying biology in order to find a cure for cancer? Are you, or, or is there also something that is connected with the, uh, the human desire to know oneself? You know, it's, uh, I think it could deepen a natural scientist's understanding of uh, his or her vocation, but it, it, it won't have an effect in the, in the actual results. I think that, that has to be, uh, that's the consequence of the field itself. And what do you think the role of the university should be globally then? What you just argued as well? Well, uh, I, I think the university has many functions. One of them is, uh, as, as Governor Weiss has mentioned, uh, that we need to produce an educated labor force. And this is, uh, uh, this is essential for our economy, but we also need to uh, 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 produce uh, an educated citizenry. But there's also a third, I would say, is, is that it, the university should encourage rugged individuals, a kind of non-conformist, people who think outside of the social box, people like Socrates, and, and these people are, I think a strong case can be made that it's good for society to have some of these people, but there's also a strong case that could be made that, uh, that there is more to life than work, uh, than even citizenship, that uh, human life inv involves uh, facing the world in its truth. And, and uh, so, so I, would, I would think of those three, three main things as the, as the goal of the university. And let's assume that, that the professor is correct, Governor. How would we ensure that more schools on the secondary level or the, high, or the university level enable people to do what we're talking about? Well, I think it's important that they understand, first of all, this, the why it's, that this is so critical. And then and in terms of encouragement, I think that we actually uh, put, let me put my government or political hat on for a second is we actually have that opportunity with the uh, Congress this year taking up again the Elementary and Secondary Education Act which is the main legislation federal legislation affecting K-12 
Uh, it, will, it will also take up uh, shortly the Higher Education Act, which will affect this institution uh, greatly. That will probably be in a year or two. And then every state right now is confronted, as it confronts its budget shortfalls, but also its demand for greater student outcomes. What is it that ought to be in the schools? And so I think this, I, the notion that we need a well-rounded education and liberal arts have to be a part of it, and that what, what we're looking for is uh, not just limited assessments and testing in certain uh, core subjects, but we're looking at a much broader application of education mm -hmm. is where we need to be moving. But let's assume we, we agree on that. Um, but let's say the American public says we're out of money. You know, we're spending X amount of dollars on health care, X amount of dollars on the military, X amount of dollars on this initiative, and we simply don't have enough money to go around. And isn't it reasonable that the public would say, well, what, is, what are we getting from X number of dollars that we're spending on the schools? What I, would, what I would argue we're doing is we're at the General Motors moment in education uh, where GM about three years ago realized that it needed to have much greater results, greater product, but yet at the same time had less money. So we're going to have to sp we look at revamping uh, how it is that we deliver education, but in so doing, what is it that we what is it we need to be adding, and what is it we need to be subtracting? How is it that we can actually deliver liberal arts or STEM education or others in different ways? Digital learning, I happen to believe, um, combining a good teacher in the classroom, but with content, and it can be liberal arts content coming in from anywhere in the world, can open up uh, minds in ways that we never imagined before. So I think there are lots of exciting ways to do it. If I would, I would say to the public. Um, um, I agree with you in the sense of I don't want to spend one additional dollar to make a dysfunctional system more expensive. I do believe we, there's a strategic investment. And incidentally on that, my organization has done a lot of work that shows the return on investment from improving education, which is a much greater return than you're going to get on a 401k or any other investment, uh, that, that it really does pay the taxpayer as well as the student in order to get this broader, better education. But who's paying for this now? I mean, if, uh, not to pick on Boston College, yeah. but Boston College's tuition is high, yes. as are, you know, the yeah, tuition is yeah. high at a lot of yeah. institutions. Um, how, what pressures are there to kind of contain some of that while producing the great thinkers that I, I think you're correctly pointing out that we need? Well, I, I think, uh, I don't know whether I, I have a solution to this big question, <laughs> But, uh, but w one thing would be good is, is that if the universities pay less attention to the, to the frills, uh, to the uh, nice do uh, dormitories, and, uh, and more attention on the substance of the education. I think that's, uh, that's uh, uh, one, uh, uh, one thing that, that could be done. But, but, uh, but it's a very complicated uh, problem, uh, and I, I just don't have an access to the full dimension of it. it it's, you said something that was kind of interesting yeah. there a moment ago, that, that you want universities to focus more on the substance. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a fair comment yeah. because, you know, I, as you know, when I'm not hosting the show, I'm yeah. traveling and visiting a number of universities. Right. And each university is nicer than the next. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got beautiful yeah. facilities, the food is terrific, everything is great at a lot of these schools, yeah. but somebody's paying for all of those things. Yeah. And are you saying that, um, that maybe we're spending a little too much time worrying about the quality of the athletic facilities and not enough in terms of the learning facilities? I, I would say so. In, 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 it's, you know, I don't have a, a firm grasp of the situation, but, but, but I think that there is more attention generally paid, uh, I, I'm speaking very generally, to the, to the appearance of the universities and less to just the substance of what a university delivers, which is that a substance should be something like this. What are we delivering to the young people who are coming to the school uh, uh, just imagining that, that there would be one's niece, one's daughter. Are we uh, providing the, them with the education that we want for our own children? If, if, we, if that was the main object, I, I, I suspect uh, um, it will help with the reduction of the, of the cost, but, but, but I'm not sure. You know, it's, it's, uh, Do you have a thought on that, Governor? Except only that you asked, you opened by asking who's paying for it. And let me turn it around and say, if we don't get a lot more of our students into some kind of post-secondary experience, we're all going to be paying for it. Because we have a job market today that is constantly requiring a higher and higher skill level and that no longer can we, be, and the current rate pipeline, if you would, of children, of young people going into post-secondary or even older students returning is not satisfactory to, maintain, to meet that skill level. And so if we're going to truly be a successful economy, we have to move a lot more of our students, young people and older people, into 
what I call one step up, move, constantly moving up the rung, the educational ladder rung. So who's going to pay for it uh, is important, who's, but we're all going to pay if we don't figure a way to greatly increase the access to higher education. Well, I think that's fair. Um, but I guess what I'm, uh, but let's say I'm, I'm a mom or a dad and I'm thinking about sending my student off to university, I'm going to look at this in the cost-benefit analysis mm -hmm. as if I'm a student looking at this. You know, what am I going to get from this degree? Mm -hmm. And what both of you are positing, and you know, and I, I'm sympathetic to the arguments, but you're positing something that is very risky for a lot of kids. So I'm going to take out a lot of loans, mm -hmm. my family's going to go into debt, and you're both arguing, if I hear you correctly, that you should take a chance on going into the liberal arts because it's important not only for you but also for, for society. But I'm taking out a lot of debt that I'm going to have to pay back in four years. So how can you maybe tie this into, into how this is going to help somebody's individual career in a very specific way? And maybe Nasser, if I can put that to you, you probably have had a lot of students who mm -hmm. have studied political philosophy, mm -hmm. gone off to law school, gone off to jobs in Washington or New York. How have they fared? That's right. Of, of course, we've had bo both graduate students and undergraduates. And, and uh, the trajectory of graduate students is very different. They often go to, to universities or, or think tanks and foundations. And, but, but, as to, but I think what you're mostly interested in is undergraduates. And, uh, and, and they've done very well in working as consultants. You know, for instance, a job like a consultant re requires someone who could look at a subject and quickly try to figure out uh, how to improve it. And uh, uh, the task of dealing with very difficult books, uh, trying to understand arguments of, of, of uh, highly intelligent authors is, is, a, is a terrific preparation for that. And on top of that, I would say that uh, one advantage of the liberal arts uh, education is that, in effect, it involves contact with great minds. They're, they're not here, they're, they're dead, but, but through their writings you see these people and it's a little bit like uh, any other activity. If you want to play basketball, it's good to play with someone who plays basketball well. And, and, and if you want to be a, a, a wise and a moderate person, it's good to spend your time with people who are wise and moderate. So, 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 it's, uh, so, so in the four years in, in college, uh, that, 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 that's the time of investment in yourself. And, it's, I'm, and I'm very sympathetic with the concerns of the students about, about uh, what they will do after, in, uh, after college. I don't want to downplay that, but, but I think it would be short-sighted to put that above uh, the investment in their own mind and their own hearts. Liberal arts. Yeah, in liberal, and I don't see liberal arts being to the exclusion. My hope mm -hmm. is that as they're taking a liberal arts program, they're also, mm -hmm. it's a broad interdisciplinary mm -hmm. program, including the sciences and math and so on. And then they, and then, but this now permits a much greater ability to choose. And I'd just like to, I know how bad that's strong, how, how, how tough that student loan can be. But if you, if you borrow on a car, from the day you drive that car off the lot, it begins to depreciate and you begin to lose. The thing about the education is you always have that education. And you can only, and it only, you only build on it. So whereas the car value immediately starts to decline, the, your value with the education immediately begins to, to appreciate, and that continues. Fair enough. Yeah. And in terms of in terms of taking the liberal arts in the workplace, um, let's let's, if you don't mind putting your hat back on as 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 a governor and yeah. before that congressman, if somebody came to you and said, I've got a liberal arts training from uh, Boston College or somewhere else but you might have a specific job opening in your office for a very specific skill set. How did you value that in the interviewing process when those students or, or reasonably young people are coming to interview to work in your office? Well, first of all, this is an information-based economy. So even if you're working in a, in a scientific or skill ba a specific skill base, it, you have to be able to take a lot of information from many different sources and make it work. In my particular case, because we oper operate a policy uh, organization, in my particular case, I don't need, you don't have to have a skill particularly uh, be totally versed in education, but I need, your, I need you to be able to understand a lot of different readings and, and to be able to apply them and to draw conclusions from them. That's the, I can, we can teach you how to do uh, quantifiable research. I can't teach you how to think, extrapolate, and synthesize, or if I can, it's going to take too long. Fair enough. And in terms of your book, Governor, would you mind saying a word or two about your book? 
Well, my book, uh, which I wrote in 2008, is called Raising the Grade, How High School Reform Can Save the, uh, the Nation. And it's really about the need to address secondary schools, and particularly high schools in this country. We focused rightly so on early childhood. We have focused rightly so in this country on improving access to college. I did that a lot in my public life, but I missed the middle. I missed the middle school and high mm -hmm. school years, and we need to make sure that it's a continuum, not something that looks like this. Fair enough. And since we're talking about books, uh, Nasser, if you wouldn't mind saying a word or two about the book that you wrote. Um. Yes, uh, I wrote a book called Leo Strauss, Max Weber, and the Scientific Study of Politics. It's, a, it's an academic book, but it deals with an important issue. And the, and the issue is basically at the bottom of political philosophy, which, which is an attempt to understand what the good society is, well, how a society ought to be, or wh what are the, the correct value judgments. And, and, and the question that I, that I examine in this book is whether it is possible to arrive at a correct value judgments, whether those value judgments are really matters of uh, subjective or emotional uh, concerns of the individuals from which one cannot reason from, or, or whether one could study them and f uh, find a, 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 an, an objective answer to, to them. So th I think that's, that's the topic of it. And what topics do you think are, are difficult for your students from year to year? Well, it's, um, I, I think this, uh, what I just said, is, is one, of the, one of the topics, because uh, they're accustomed to think of, of um, moral issues as questions of values. As, as, and by values, they tend to think is something that you just feel. And, 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 and one of the things that I have to do is, is to try to show them that it's good to have these feelings, it's good to bring them out, but one could also analyze them. And, 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 and the, the, it's uh, that, the, the, that their own feelings are, uh, um, the contain sort of certain inconsistencies, so to, that it's good for them to put it on the table, and, and through this analysis, they actually will end up changing their opinions. It's a, it's a, my job is not to, to uh, change their opinion to a particular direction, but, but rather to make them reflective about those opinions. And in terms of those opinions, how heated are some of the discussions in your class? Well, um, it, it could be, because sometimes a good teacher would have to um, hit, the, hit a nerve, you know, it's, uh, and, uh, but generally my, my, my classes are friendly. <laughs> so you heard it here, take Professor Benegar's classes at Boston College, because he's friendly. Um, Governor, if you could say a word or two about um, some of the initiatives that you're currently working on at the Alliance, um, I think that would be helpful. Well, the Alliance, one thing we're trying to do is to get a lot more students ready for the professor's classes, mm -hmm. uh, because we want to graduate ch uh, students college and career ready, so we focus on on what needs to be done to, first of all, greatly lower the dropout rate, increase high school graduation, and then second, what is the needs to be done to make sure when that student gets a high school diploma, they're truly college and career ready for today's society. And so, and then a third area we're working on a lot is how do we get much better content to students, and that's where we get into this new world of digital learning. This is an incredibly complex and technical world. What the professor's talking about is so critical because we need to be able to think our way through a lot of these issues and to be able to apply that technology, to apply that uh, new knowledge that we're, we're getting all the time. But we we need to have some core values, and that to me is what the liberal yeah. arts are about. And does it concern you that other countries are moving at a slightly faster pace? It concerns me greatly. We're not educating worse than we were before. It's just a lot more nations are educating better. I'm, global competition is important. Even more important is global participation. And we need all of our students able to compete at the, or to participate at the same level at least as the rest of the world. So this is a, a major area of concern. And Nasser, do you find that some of your international students are better prepared, not as prepared, than, than the American students? Well, it, it's difficult for me to gauge this because uh, there is the, the problem of language. You know, it's uh, especially with the kind of books that I teach. Uh, knowledge of English is very important. It, it's uh, uh, probably, I think, from the, from the point of view of sciences, my guess is that uh, the international students are better. But 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 I don't know this from immediate experience. Yeah. And so what advice would you have for students who are, uh, and families who are watching this who are thinking about the liberal arts, thinking about Boston College, mm -hmm. thinking about political philosophy generally? Well, I, I would say that uh, to, to begin with, even before going to school, I encourage people to read books uh, slowly. <laughs> you know, it, it's, uh, uh, don't read much, but uh, read few good things. Uh, um, uh, Shakespeare and the Bible, uh, is, uh, if, if, if you read them, you will know more about the world than just by traveling around the world. 
It's, uh, and, and, and as to adult students, I want to, uh, the, the older students, I want to encourage them to realize that they have an advantage over the younger students because they have experiences. And, the, and these books speak to their experiences. So, so they should not feel intimidated about going back to college it's, uh, and, and make use of this advantage. It's quite a significant statement, actually, in this day of uh, 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 iPhones, smartphones, uh, technology, satellites, uh, uh, GPS, um, uh, yet the Bible and Shakespeare still helps ground us uh, for whatever happens. And so there's some things that are timeless in how we think and how we interact with one another is one of them, and that's what I believe the liberal arts are about. Well, I think that that's a great defense of the liberal arts from both of you, so thank you both very much for coming in today and defending the liberal arts at the University of the District of Columbia. Thank if you would like additional information about the Alliance for Excellent Education or the Boston College Political Science Department, please visit all4ed.org or bc.edu. Thank you for watching. We will continue to bring you quality discussions about important matters in today's college and university world. Please join me again for another edition of Higher Education Today. I'm Stephen Roy Goodman, and you've been watching Higher Education Today.